All right. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thanks for suffering through all of my previous videos, if you watched them. If not, uh, I don't know. What? Good for you? I don't Sure. Good for you. Uh, last time, we talked a little bit about uh, Lex and Yak in general. Um, you know, uh, we... And we looked at, um, yeah, these, oops, um, these simple uh, yak files and uh, simple lexer. Um, and this time I'm just gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go through scan um, dot l. Um, quite as much as I had, uh, took notes on because I feel like we covered a lot of that in the uh, previous video. Um, just, you know, gonna give a little bit of background. Um, you know, all that good stuff. Um, give a little bit of, you know, just, I don't know, just go over scan.l quickly and hopefully it'll take way less time because we went over that simple version of a, a Lex file. Um, but yeah, like, you know, like we said in the last video, everything between that and this guy is just arbitrary C code. Uh, we got some include files, a variable that keeps track of which line we're in, um, in our, you know, the current file that we're reading, which file we're currently reading, uh, what the last file that we were reading was, um, a structure that uh, you know allows us to go back to a file um, after we're done with whatever file we included. Um, this is just some, some technical stuff so that uh, Flex slash Lex can you know keep its uh, internal state together. Um, this is the previous line number that we were on in the previous file. And uh, this is what we're supposed to insert when we get to um, is the token we're supposed to return um, at end of file, um, if any. Um, so yeah, and then um, the struct is called include, but then you know the pointer to the last of them is also called include, and then you know you. Mm, you move the pointer backwards um, when you're done with a file. Um, yeah, so pretty, you know, just standard stuff to keep your include files done. This is, you know, a function that we execute at the end when we're done including a file, um, which you can see right here and we read end of file. So this is a special uh, state that Flex has that, uh, you know, lets you tell it what to do when it, when you reach into file. And, you know, if that pointer is null, then that means we're done reading all the configuration. And so then we return yy null, which tells yy parse that we're totally done reading input. Um, if this is not null, then there's a previous file that we were included from that we have to go back and finish reading. Um, and end include is going to tell us um, whether or not we should return something since we're at the end of this current file um, or not. You know, if toke is zero, then we're not going to return this, which it always is zero. And if you include a file from a configuration file, um, the only time it's not zero is when you're including something from the set machine function, which gets called when we do that machine line. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we want to look at the end include file, basically, like all it does is just like take you back to the previous uh, include file. So like, not really a huge uh, issue, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty pretty simple, honestly. Um, and then this. So um, this current line function, um, you can get an off by one error when you ask uh, like, hey, what's the current line number? Because uh, 
YY parse can actually call YY lex like one token ahead to make sure that it's doing the right thing. Um, so, you know, if the uh, previous uh, YY care is like the last token red, um, if that's equal to in, then you subtract one because it has already read a new line. And so it's going to be off by one in its line count. Um, that's pretty, you know, simple. This gets in call, this include function gets called whenever we include something as well as from set machine. Um, and it calls the setup dirs function the very first time that it's called, which we already went over. It just makes sure that source dir and build dir are correct. Um, and everything else is just it setting up that include structure correctly. Um, as well as like, you know, uh, this is just, um, changing uh, relative, pa relative paths to an absolute path um, because this like yeah I guess they switched this up um, at some point in the like history of this program and they were just like uh, I don't want to have to deal with changing every like file reference from a relative path uh, to a non-relative one um, yeah it's not super important um, I went through all of this like if you want to go through all of this and make sure that everything works out okay by all means you know eat your heart out but uh, I'm pretty sure that all of this uh, is very uh, copacetic I think that's the right word copacetic let's go with copacetic um, yeah we talked about first file and we've talked about this end of file part um, and yeah like, you know, it's pretty uh, pretty basic stuff the rest of the way. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry if you uh, noticed that, like, maybe uh, some things have uh, changed in that last one second. It's because uh, this place is like Grand Central Station, and my computer's right in the middle of it. And uh, things are always happening, so occasionally it's hard to find time to record a video. But... Um, yeah, we were just talking about, you know, um, this option no YY wrap says that uh, when we're done reading input, we're done. Um, don't even try to like, after we return YY null, like we do um, in that end include, when that gets returned, we're done. Um, and then these are all just... Um, lists of regular expressions that you can use later instead of having to write all of this out. Um, so yeah, if you don't know regular expressions, um, the basics of it are things between brackets um, are just like lists of like single characters. So this is like any, and they can have ranges. So anything, any capital letter, any lowercase letter, an underscore, or a digit. Uh, the star means zero or more of the previous thing. And then this is a single dot or a single four slash. The dot, when it's not inside character, uh, uh, this these brackets, means any character except new line. So, yeah, it's a letter, digit, or underscore, zero or more of them, followed by a dot or a four slash, and then a dash, A through Z, capital or lowercase underscore number dot four slash or a dollar sign or a brace open or closed brace um, the main difference between these two is that a path has to have a dot or a four slash and a word cannot unless it's uh, in between quotes so they do offer this like whole thing as like a quoting mechanism um, so that you can make words be anything you want, but like they have to be between quotes. Um, but yeah, like the main the main thing to know about scan.l is just that most of the tokens are just like their symbolic version anyway. Like the actual number value of a lot of these doesn't really matter. It's something that's like two fifty greater than two fifty six, as we discussed earlier. So that like you can return um, just like a single ASCII character or any character between zero and two fifty five, um, 
which like we do, right? Any non new line character, we just return what that character's ASCII value is. But for all the other ones, um, you uh, the symbolic version is just like a capitalized version of the thing that it read, except for the ones that begin with X, like X machine is, you know, just machine. And X, same thing with like X file, there's an X object. And then options is listed twice because you can do options and option, RM option and RM options and make option and make options. So those, that's what most of the tokens that Lex can return are. <clears throat> the others are it can return a path name, which is more or less something that has a dot or a slash in it. Um, it can return a word, which is more or less just letters, digits, underscores, and dashes beginning with a letter, digit, or underscore. And it can also return an empty string, um, although that's pretty rarely used. And it can return a number. That's it, right? Um, you know what this like yylval.val thing is. Um, that's you return you returning the value of the number, right? Um, same thing with like this string yylval.string. Uh, that's you returning the string or a character pointer as the value of a token um, or the value associated with a token. Um, yeah, that's basically that's basically it, you know. Um, if you want to have a line that's like split across multiple lines because it's just so long, um, you have to like begin it with white space. Um, so that's the only case where we see a new line that we won't uh, return the new line character, but we will return our internal counter of which line we're on. Um, the only other thing to really say is that all of these technically would work as a word. Um, and the reason why these are listed first is because when flex matches something, um, it's going to, first it'll match the longest match that it can. It'll return the longest match. But then if the matches are the same length, like and would also match word, um, right? Because it's just, you know, it starts with a letter or underscore, and then it's followed by zero or more letters. So that would work as a word. But because and is listed first um, after this, uh, it's going to return and. So yeah, that's pretty much it for scan.l. Um, I'm not going to come back to this. Uh, basically, if you're returning any of these guys, you're just returning something with the same lowercase string value as the symbolic value, except for path name, word, empty, and number. And that's it. Um, you can also return um, a token that's called at end of file, I think. Um, but that only happens when we're done with one of the files that gets included by the machine line. So yeah, that's it for scan.l. Um, let's move on to um, the very beginning of yyparse. Um, yeah, because I want to just clear up this sort of introductory stuff. Um, so like we said, and this should go a little pretty quickly because we've done the simple version. Whoa, I don't know what happened there. You know, everything between this and this next one is arbitrary C code. This is stuff that we use um, in our actions, you know, um, that are associated with various rules. Um, it's not a whole lot there, actually. You know, these are just defines for creating NV lists. Um, this union looks maybe familiar. The only things that get returned from yylex are the string and the int. But then within yyyak, you can return an env list pointer, a dev a pointer, a dev base pointer, or an attribute pointer. We'll get into what all that means soon enough. 
you know, you, these are all of the uh, tokens that we have to uh, include. Um, and actually, uh, while we're here, we can, um, should be able to find um, the uh, token that gets returned at the end of file. Um, root source swap. Um, I don't know. Anyway, we will we will find it at some point. Um, sorry about that. Um, Grand Central Station in here. So uh, <laughs> yeah, um, in file. That's the token that gets included. Um, this you know says what associativity or or vertical bar and ampersand have, but those you know if you know any programming you know that those mean or and and. Um, yeah, and then these are all of the like the types of all the values of things, um, all the values that all the things that are in the grammar that you know need to return something. What type they all have. So path names is an NV list. These are all NV lists. These are all integers, strings, attributes, dev bases, dev attachments. Um, Value, integer, uh, envy list, string, envy list, string, envy list, envy list, string, 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 integer, integer. You know, more or less basic stuff. So, um, yeah. And then we've actually kind of already gone over this part one, right? Uh, the first part is just like top things. At least I think we did. Maybe I'm going crazy. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this first part is just uh, top things and machine specification. Um, I don't know if we went, you know, you can set this source and you can set this build or you can include stuff. And then when you call set machine, um, yeah, I remember I wasn't able to type. Yeah, yeah. So set machine. You just uh, include all of these things, and you return in file when you get to the end of that. And uh, that is basically because um, when, like, so in file, this is the only place it's used. This token. Uh, when it reduces that to a dev end of file, it runs in defs and check files, um, <clears throat> which you know make sure we didn't use something that wasn't defined um, in like previous that hasn't been defined yet, and make sure that like you know we don't have uh, a needs count file line that's using something other than a dev base. Um, yeah, um, so I think. Like, what I want, did I want to do this? I think I wanted to do this too. Yeah, so that's like, yeah, we've been over that. And then, um, yeah, this is, okay, now we're finally starting to get into the grammar. So these are the file lines, right? This is, I've been referencing this a lot. Um, it's remember this X file is just the word file um, followed by path names and so this is where I was actually remember when we did that sort of simple yak how I was saying these two need to be switched this is why right you assign <clears throat> this thing to be this first you sign the return value to be this first thing and you set its NV next to a like new name value structure with you know the name being the string that's returned by the lexer in path name and then you don't set its next pointer so like this should only end up like it only works for you know path names of length two or less um but anyway most of the time it's just one thing anyway and then this f ops um, this is 
a, an expression, right? F ops, it can either be an expression or it can be empty. Um, but if it is an expression, then that means that this X file is getting included um, conditionally on whether or not this F expression is quote unquote true. Um, so what true means for an atom depends on what these like F flags are. If the F flags, which is like can be multiple single F flags, but syn syntactically it can be both, but actually like we'll check in the code that actually only one of these is set because it can only be one. If it's empty or it's needs flag, then true is determined by um, for f for an f atom is determined by whether or not this f atom is in the select tab. That's what true means. Um, if it needs count, then true is determined by whether or not this f atom, which by the way, this f atom is just a word, right? But it's supposed to mean different things depending on right. It's an attribute. Um, well, it's just anything that's in the select tab. If you've got no flag or needs flag, if you've got needs count, then it's going to be a uh, it's got to be a dev base. And so that what that's what it means to be true for an atom. This not line is true if this f atom is false, right? And then this f ex this line is true if f expression uh, is if this sub f expression and this sub f expression are true, right? This one, this line is true if you know one of these is true, um, and this is you know just lets you order things appropriately because um, this left and right or this left these two lines mean that this has lower precedence than this and. So this is where it's important is in this stuff. But <clears throat> yeah, that's where like, so we'll need to pay attention to what's what gets put into the select tab because that's gonna determine what files get included based on what this option is. And then this rule isn't really used, but it's like a compile with word. And this word should almost always be in quotation marks, but essentially this word is just how you can like the special makefile rule that you use to compile this particular file. Um, yeah, and if you don't, you can leave it empty too, right? It can also be empty. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and basically what this add file function does um, is. Yeah, there it is. Um, right, we check and make sure that you can't have needs count and needs flag. Um, <clears throat> and we make sure that you have actually an option, um, but don't have, uh, like if you don't have a list of things to be optional on, you can't have needs count or needs flag. And then we loop through the all the path names that are given, which most of the time is just one. Um, but notice that this path variable gets set every time we enter the loop. So down here, when we put this path in the path table, we're only putting the last one in the list in here, which seems odd to me, but whatever. Um, in this loop, we just make sure that like the base names um, of all of the path names that you gave us are the same, right? <clears throat> so they have to all produce the same .o file. And then we make sure right here um, that we're not uh, putting uh, the same file path in um, this path table twice. Although it seems to me like you would want to uh, put each of these in there. So. I don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, I'm gonna ask the mailing list at some point if that's incorrect. Although, like I said, they probably don't care because in almost every, like there's like 12 files that I was able to find, 12 file lines where there was more than one and each of those only had two. 
So, and there's like thousands of files that get compiled into the kernel. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and you can see like we return like uh, yeah, we add this file to our like list of files <clears throat> and update what next file points to. Um, this is our option expression gets added to like this option expression list that we were given. The flags uh, get set to flags, like assuming um, this NV path list gets set to the NV path list that uh, we're given here, right? Um, the rule will get set down here if we're given one. Um, the base gets interned, so like later I guess we'll compare bases and we just want to compare pointers to them. We don't want to have to compare the whole string. Great. Um, this current line function, remember from scan.l, that goes there. But yeah, basically we create a file structure that has all the information that we want. Um, <clears throat> if we give it options, that determines whether or not it's going to be compiled. Um, and we just have to look out for when select tab gets used and when it doesn't. So <clears throat> yeah, that's all I'm gonna cover today. This video has probably gone way too long. I know I say that every time, but you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> they, you know, it's hard to explain uh, a lot of code quickly. So uh, <clears throat> I certainly spent more time reading it than I did making videos about it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, hopefully you learned something and uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace.